Hey guys, so just a quick thing before we start today's video. A friend of ours has started a history channel and he's two videos in so far. And don't forget, there is some kink still to work out, so cut him some slack. He's getting there. I, th I think the improvement from video one to video two is pretty it's big. Immense. It's pretty big. Yeah, so, and I think uh, he really is on to something. So head on over, give his videos a like, give yeah. him a subscribe, give him some support, tell him that we yeah. sent you. Also, I've been thinking I want to I want to do a live stream with them to do like a tier list of like you know World War One armies or something yeah. like that like you know just something a bit of fun. From yeah, time so you time. might see James over there now. And I might I, like like I enjoy my history and I'm not going to say no. So you yeah. do you want to do some history shit? It's like <laughs> fuck yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, head on over, give him a wee subscribe, and tell him that we sent you, and hopefully it's something you like. But let's get into the video. D and D cursed items. How do you guys feel about cursed items? Either as a DM implementing them or as a PC obtaining them. Good or bad experiences? Do you give them an obvious tell or setup? Tips on how not to scare your party away from every item. What kind of curse have you given or been given? TLDR cursed items in general. The last good one I remember cut off Jonathan's head. Yeah. It was a Vorpal sword that kept talking to him. Yeah. And he till, hadn't uh, talked yet, but he would. He, 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 he was it. refusing to, and he was like leaving in buckets of acid. <laughs> and because it's a vertical blade on the on a goal of a twenty, mm -hmm. automatically lops your head off. So uh, pity about that, but look, you know, Jonathan <laughs> has a, was having a lot of fun. I thought it was a good curse item, to be honest with you. Although the only other one I got, I got one. It was um, like hide armor, but it was like very fleshy. It pretty much just at my hip dice. It was actually gully shit. It was genuinely like just a bad item. I had to end up getting a car to take it off me. Oh. But yeah, I know I got to get a priest to undress me. <laughs> it was pretty like, Ooh. Ooh, guys, that was horrible. But yeah, they're very car times I can think of in the past couple months that I've interacted with for that. But hey, let's get into this, will we? Give my players a magic hat. Every time they reached Indian, they seemingly pulled out another random hat. Little did they know that those hats belonged to people. It just allowed the players to steal hats from people within their plane at random. So as players were trying to put a hat that could produce a seemingly infinite amount of other hats to good use, such as building a dam out of hats, giving hats to the poor, selling some of the finer quality ones, things turned sour after they pulled a crown out from it. Word reached the players of a missing crown belonging to a king in a nearby city. People everywhere then cursed an uproar due to all their hats going missing. Now they're too scared to go to any city and they're roaming around in a desert wasteland. Not sure if this counts as a cursed item, but it was funny at the time. I'm not I don't exactly know if it cursed. counts as cursed, but it, 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 it does sound like a lot of fun. Yeah. And, I, and I do like the idea of giving players stuff that they do not fully understand. understand. Because if I was given that, I'd be like, "Why with all the hats?" And why they like these hats have to be? I'd be thinking like oh, these hats. Oh, you used. know what? You know what I'd be thinking of? Do you remember that movie, The Prestige? Yes. And he kept multiplying the hats. Yes. I would have thought it was something like that. You yeah. remember with Tesla and he was yeah. throwing the hats in? Yeah. Our party was stealing a holy relic from the local church. It was a goblet that the Tree of Life was watered from. We were offered a mighty sum for our Red Dragon clan lord. However, we weren't told that the monks took periodic turns to guard the goblet. All well and fine, you would think. However, the goblet absorbs the faces of those who touch it until another one does. So cue the party freaking out when we're trying to escape with a faceless rogue and a screaming <laughs> goblet. <laughs> was fun though. Cursed items are often rather hilarious and never really go to plan. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that yeah. that's pretty much the key to a good cursed item. Yeah. It really it's needs like to fuck you your went day up. That cursed room, and you came back out with titties. Yes, that yeah. was um, that was um, tomb of annihilation. Yeah, one minute a little goblin walked in, and the next minute a goblin walked out with big old fat titties. Well, look, I thought Gobby looked quite handsome. <laughs> With them, <laughs> thank God I could walk back in and turn me back. I was, I was going to yeah. shit myself. I was like, "Teal, you haven't gender bent me, have you? You haven't. You don't, wouldn't do this to me." In an underdark setting, my dry players found a cursed mask made of red feathers. They were hesitant, but eventually the rogue put it on. She promptly flew to the ceiling. Gravity was reversed on her and all her possessions. Convenient at times, especially as she could sneak attack practically anything. But she couldn't enter big caverns until she got it removed. Imagine emerging from a tunnel faced with a huge drop before your feet. 
At least they were underground. Yeah, that would end up fucking perfectly yeah. if you're outside. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, let me just fall off and That's fucking so oblivion. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> It'd be you? like in GTA, you know, whatever you put on the mods, um, civilians fly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but no, that actually would be really cool for the rogue. And yeah. see the idea of being able to like pretty much walk on walls. Yeah, you know, being able to like walk on the ceilings and all that. That does sound to me like yes, it is cursed, but also incredibly useful. Yeah, is it? Well, you were able to do that. You had the. the I've got them walking the, the spider climb the slippers. slippers. No, they're spider ones, I think. Oh. The elven ones just make you like silent, but uh, these ones you can actually you can like walk on. on walls, yeah. yeah, yeah. My DM had one interesting take on this. In an epic quest to recover a powerful artifact blade, the shrine was surrounded by an army. We had been told under no circumstances to draw it because we were doomed anyway. I didn't listen and wrenched it out of the scabbard. The DM says, "You kill everyone. The army or my players. Everyone." We were resurrected later from clones that had been fortuitously prepared. The area was later known as the Valley of Death, and my old body, now unique Death Knight, would ride out to cover the lands of Middle Earth in darkness. Sometimes cursed blades need a wielder, but not a master. What is this, like a sort of nyx? I know what happens. <laughs> I, I, I want to know the effect more. I want to know, it's like, okay, did everyone just kill over and die yeah. did did the sword fly about and lop everyone's heads off or d- did it create a the way he's talking it just sounds like everyone just dropped yeah based <laughs> can he be yeah kind of, I, suppose, I suppose like you know it is a bit of a doomsday weapon yeah I wonder how could you play with this though and how what's the AOE yeah how, that's what I want to know I want to know what's the AOE of it yeah like is it within like 200 feet yeah or yeah. is it like the entire population of like a nearby town and stuff you see this is why teal doesn't let me have nice things <laughs> because i i ask questions like this <laughs> it's like i'm banned from fucking anything fun all right i was actually talking to teal not that long ago and it was whenever we were actually doing um tomb of annihilation and we ran into some of that blind mold and mm-hmm. what makes blind yes. mold interesting is it expands with contact of fire of heat, yeah? yeah and because we're in a spell jammer setting it's like, you know, there's plenty of planets, plenty of stars. Mm-hmm. I just thought if I could, like, you know, strap some to, like, you know, a ballista and, like, you know, <laughs> shit some at a start, maybe, maybe I could hold some planets hostage, maybe a bit of racketeering. <laughs> but no, I wasn't allowed to. He's like, no, no, because what I'm going to do is if you do do that, you're not going to be clo- It's going to be too close and you're going to get hit by the ex- expulsion. Yeah. It's like, can I not find a way to make it? It's like, no, you can't. You just fucking can't, jeans. It's not happening, right? It's like, okay, fine. Maybe he's got a point, you know. Hey guys, so are you looking to spice up your game night? Do you need some orcs to raid your camp? Do you need some illithids to suck out your brains? Do you need some undead to rise from the graves? What about a dragon to slap down in the table and fuck up your players with? Or, if you prefer a frost giant or a manticore, we got them. It's a lot more fun than dropping rocks in your players' heads. Or, maybe you just want short stacks. Because we know you love them. (laughs) We have such an expansive range of fantasy options. And we're currently trying to expand into not 40k. (laughs) Also, if models isn't your thing, go check out our subclasses. There's loads of stuff there that you might find interesting. But go ahead and check it out. Links are all down below and let's get back into the video. I think cursed items only really work if they change the way the game is played for a period of time. If it's some minor random nerf, it's just boring and tiresome. Therefore, if it does change the way you play the game, it will come out on its own, organically. No need to tip the players off. And as for scaring players away, I wouldn't say that's a terrible thing. That's just plain role playing. Though to be clear, I don't think a large number of cursed items is a good idea. The number should be well below 10%. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Simply because no matter what the magic level of your setting is, if 30% of magic items were horribly, horribly cursed, only the insane would ever use them. Speaking of which, insane people are a good source of cursed items. The Mad Warlock becomes a lot more three-dimensional and interesting as a character if after you kill him, you realise, whoa, I just murdered a fucking golem here. 
Good effect for cursed items to have. Something that imposes status conditions if you don't act in a certain way. Something that works well most of the time, but can fail you in a significant way. Or something similar, like glows in the presence of orcs, really brightly. Shame you were trying to sneak up on them, eh? <laughs> yeah, I always wondered about that. Yeah. Basically, it feels more organic if the item communicates, not by some telepathic dialogue with funny voices, but through actions that manifest in the game world, and it gets a person more nervous to be dealing with a powerful force they don't fully understand, instead of just taking orders from a force who has explicitly stated his intentions and goals. You know, now I, mention, now I think about I it. it. Yeah, now I think about it, I actually have come across another cursed item, that Sayama crystal that we find. Do you remember though? Oh, you weren't in the game. It's, in the it's game. from the Icewind Deal game. Oh, yeah. So what happened was we found a crystal. It was in a skull. Okay, elephant skull in a mine. Definitely wasn't going to be good. So we find it. Uh, we opened up the skull. We find the crystal. And of course, Netty the Yeti, with his instant infinite wisdom, said, well, look, we find it in this guy's head. Maybe we should put it into your head. So uh, yeah, I said, yeah. That's a- Get I said, you know what? That's actually a great idea. So I put, <laughs> so I put it in my mouth. Eh? Eh? I, that's, that kind of worked, didn't it? Okay. So I put it in my mouth. Didn't really work. After a few days, we started noticing the effects and the feels of it. Pretty much it turned me into like a radio station of sorts. <laughs> but if you want to hear more about that, check out the all, Almost All Goblinoid Party because uh, we're doing videos about that one. So yeah. I won't, we'll I won't talk about it. too much about it now. If you're interested in that type of shit, go ahead and check that yeah. video. We had a real dick of a GM. We didn't realise it for a while, but the majority of our loot we got was cursed. I'll give you a list of things. Ring of swimming. Every time you go swimming, it gives you a 50% of plus 10 to swim or minus 10 to swim. Oh, shit. Ooh. Gloves that give you plus one to hit. However, when you roll a crit, you lose half HP. Oh. A book of spells, and every time a character opens a door, a random spell is cast. Oh, fuck. Mm. Kill the character that way. The scariest thing was trying to figure out what set it off. Oh, oh no. you wouldn't know what set it off. That's actually good. Oh, again. that is good. Yeah. The biggest dick move was him giving a party member a plus three AC amulet, but that was also a lich's factory. No. So what was happening? Was the lich talking to him? Was he uh, giving him... Ways of, oh, go this way, do this, you know? Yeah. Was he tempting him with power, maybe? Tempting him with... Yeah. The the Book of Spells of the Door. That, that sounds great. That sounds that really good. That would confuse me so much, wondering why these are going off all the time. Yeah. My players can normally count that every single magical item I give them will be cursed or have some sort of drawback. Even if it is something obvious, like identifying a red magic sword. I say it catches everything it touches on fire once it's activated. They activate it while holding it. They catch it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good, actually. I like that. <laughs> if you think about it, there would be a lot more novice wizards that suck up magic than there would be great wizards that make properly legendary artifacts. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I, uh, for me, personally, I always like the idea of most wizards end up killing themselves. Yeah. Kind of like, you know the way whenever you see like people that make like explosives always have missing fingers? Yeah. You can't have to all from Northern Ireland. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, like, you know, I do like to imagine that most wizards would have killed themselves by accident oh, experimenting. Yeah, 100%. Because, let's be serious, Magic in almost any setting that I can think of is pretty fucking dangerous. Yeah. And what's the difference between magic and making explosives in your kitchen? <laughs> yeah. You know, hmm. So, yeah, I think that's where we're going to end. But I want to hear about your cursed items. Because I think, honestly, giving cursed items out is way more fun than giving, like, actually powerful items. Powerful items <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? I, 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 I think it's better for, like, low level groups yeah. to be using them because then you do get something from it of a bonus but you also do get some level of a drawback however there's a high chance of people killing themselves with <laughs> said items <laughs> yeah. an awful lot of the time so yeah. it really depends on what the players do but hey most players are absolute fucking retards at the yeah. best of times yeah. so uh, you know is it really a drawback you know <laughs> so, yeah. I mean like you know the best the best way to fuck with your party is the shit that they do to themselves <laughs> you know I think I think that's the best way to watch them so yeah tell us about your stories all down below and while you're down there check out the links to the models the subclasses the t-shirts all that good shit hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post 
and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.